A killer called Son of Sam. He preyed on pretty young women. He terrorized New York City. He taunted the police and the media. And since he was caught, he has not talked. Until now. Inside Edition, straight ahead. We got the story. The next flight to Chicago. Today, an Inside Edition exclusive. For 16 years, the man who terrorized New York City has held his silence. But now, the man known as the son of Sam is talking. David Berkowitz speaks about his dark and hellish past. I don't really even remember when it first began where someone somehow got the idea that, yeah, we're going to, you know, we're going to have to kill somebody one day and do the ultimate sacrifice. In a shocking confession, the 44 caliber killer tells of devil worship, of cult members who helped him carry out his gruesome string of killings, and he reveals chilling details. I did not pull the trigger at every single one of them. Today, David Berkowitz takes us inside the Son of Sam murders. Two, one. Bill O'Reilly, thanks for watching Inside Edition today. He was an ordinary guy, a postal worker, but he became the most notorious killer in New York City history. And 16 years after his killing spree, the son of Sam is still making front page news here in New York. But why? It may be because David Berkowitz now says he had help killing young women, contradicting his original confession to police. As investigative journalist Maury Terry reports, this new information is shocking, but some are taking it very seriously. Here's the exclusive story. This maximum security prison in upstate New York is home to David Berkowitz. On this sparkling morning, Berkowitz would rise in his cell as usual, but from that point on, this day would be different because within hours the man known to the world as the son of Sam would be breaking a 16-year silence to tell what really happened in one of the most notorious and mysterious serial murder cases in US criminal history my name is Maury Terry for the past two decades I've been an investigative journalist and an author covering crime I've worked on a lot of big cases but they pale in comparison with the Son of Sam killings. There were so many angles to this story, so many unanswered questions, so many dark secrets I knew remained buried. I was never able to let it go. My initial investigation as a newspaper reporter uncovered information which strongly suggested that Berkowitz hadn't acted alone. This evidence led to the reopening of the case two years after his arrest. I would later publish all my findings in the best-selling book, The Ultimate Evil. It was 600 pages of evidence that exploded the official version of the case. New York City had never been hotter. The excitement of the bicentennial celebrations had injected it with new life. The daytime streets were bustling. The harbor glistened with the spectacle of the tall ships. And the nights throbbed to a new beat known as disco. But July 29 would be the day the music died. Just weeks after the night sky exploded in a glorious burst of fireworks, a deafening echo of 44 caliber gunshots would ring out in the Bronx. Two teenage girls returning home from a suburban disco were cut down as they sat in a parked car. They would be the first to fall in the killing fields of the Son of Sam. His preferred hunting grounds were quiet lover's lanes in residential neighborhoods of the city. His preferred victims were teenage girls sitting in parked cars with their boyfriends. And his weapon of choice was a 44 caliber bulldog revolver. It would tragically end the young lives of Donna Loria, Christine Freund, Virginia Voscarichian, Valentina Soriani, Alexander Esau, and Stacy Moskowitz. Others would be seriously wounded, some of them maimed for life. For 13 months, 
the Son of Sam shootings held the New York metropolitan area in the grip of fear. You're underneath the Westchester area near Middletown Road. There's a guy sitting on the, the street there. In one of the biggest manhunts in American criminal history, police had vainly tracked a diabolical killer who moved under the cover of night. You know, if we're going to get this guy, we've got to get the jump on every floor. The murderer taunted the frustrated police and frenzied media with cryptic letters. Young women were cutting their hair short after police theorized his targets were females with long, dark hair. Discos were empty. The night streets were deserted. New York had become a city under siege. It's always good advice for young people or, or any people to stay out of dark areas late at night where they leave themselves vulnerable to attack. By, by August of 1977, when the toll had risen to six dead and seven wounded, the Son of Sam story had captured the attention of the entire country. There had been eight separate attacks throughout the Bronx, Queens, and Brooklyn before the reign of terror finally came to an end. The people of the city of New York can rest easy this morning because of the fact that the police have captured a man whom they believe to be the son of Sam. David Berkowitz was 24, a pudgy postal worker who lived in the New York City suburb of Yonkers. He readily confessed, telling a bizarre tale of how he had been commanded to kill by a neighbor's dog. But psychiatrists said Berkowitz faked that story, and he was found sane. He then pled guilty and was locked away without even standing trial. Despite his confession to being the lone killer, I had long believed that Berkowitz had partners in crime. I began to conduct my own investigation, and key authorities in the case eventually endorsed my findings. I believe that David Berkowitz did not act alone, and in fact, it has crossed my mind that this 44 caliber pistol that was the weapon used in the shootings uh, that we witnessed uh, was passed around among a number of people. The one person who could confirm this was David Berkowitz himself, but for 16 years he has refused to speak. Now I was just moments away from becoming the first newsman to interview him about the Son of Sam killings. In just a few moments, we will hear from Berkowitz himself. He'll talk about his horrendous killing spree, how he was involved with a satanic cult, and how he had help in committing murder after murder. That, when Inside Edition continues. From Walt Disney Pictures, one wanted to defeat them. Hello again, Cyclops. One wanted to seduce them. Musketeer isn't afraid of danger. I'm dangerous. And one wanted them dead. I'm really a very gentle person. <laughs> but no one can stop the musketeer. Ah! Did I miss anyone? All for what? And more for me. A shot. The Three Musketeers, rated PG. Starts Friday, November 12th. Check newspaper for showtimes. In Flat Rock, Michigan, they built the Mazda 626 so that even with its V6 engine, it still costs less than a four-cylinder Camry LE. Around Flat Rock, they think that's a powerful argument for the 626. And so do we. Maybe you didn't know that the Mazda 626 comes with the best basic warranty in its class. But the people of Flat Rock, Michigan stand behind the car they built. And that's why we can too. Before you see it on cable, you'll see it on Fox. Ah! He's a tough L.A. cop. She's his mommy. And with a crime-fighting team like this... Get him! We're gonna nail those turkeys! The crooks don't stand a chance. Sylvester Stallone... Put a machine gun off the back of a van? Estelle Getty... I wanted it to be a surprise! It is! Stop! Or my mom will shoot! Tonight at 8 on Fox 5. Hi, your anchor banker here. Now, just in case you think anchor's low loan rates are the only thing that's important to me, I'd like to show you some pictures. My grandmother, she's quite fond of our home equity rates. My nephew, he lives in a house bought with an anchor mortgage. This is the phone number to call and ask about our low loan rates. This is my cat, Michael. 
He needs to lose weight. Anchor Bank. Big bank banking, small bank caring. How does an ordinary man turn into a serial killer? What ignites that kind of craziness? David Berkowitz did not have an easy life. His mother gave him up for adoption. For years, he didn't know who his real father was. He was a lonely, unhappy child. But Berkowitz says what triggered his lethal rage happened at a simple party. Here again, Maury Terry. Even after the arrest of David Berkowitz, the world got only the briefest glimpse of the night-stalking phantom called the Son of Sam. He was immediately sent to prison, and there he has remained, as silent and mysterious as he was back in 1977. Because of my work on the case, Berkowitz knew who I was. In the early 80s, he had even sent me several letters, offering clues to aid my investigation. But now, for the first time in all these years, I was about to see what he was really like, and finally hear what he had to say. In many years, I tried to fight you and push you away, but you always hung in there, and I never asked you to help me. It was hard to believe that this polite, well-spoken man was the notorious criminal I had been pursuing for so long. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Father, I thank you now. Thank you, Lord. And we pray, Father, that you honor what you've done in his life. We thank, thank you, you that he's covered by a different kind of blood today. Thank the you. blood of Jesus. Berkowitz has been a devout Christian for the past five years. And that's why he agreed to tell me his story. He didn't want money, just the opportunity to set the record straight on who he really is and what he actually did. I would like to think that, I, that God has allowed me the opportunity to make my life count now. I'd like to think that uh, somehow that the past could gradually be wiped away. But before he could erase the past, he first had to confront it. And what he would say during our many hours together would dramatically rewrite the Son of Sam story. I look back and I say, my God, I don't know how this all happened. I didn't know, I honestly didn't know that people were going to die one day. And I'm so very sorry that happened. And the people that didn't deserve it uh, would just lost their lives. And I know that... Uh, how did it all happen? It's a trail of tragedy that began many years and many miles from this prison. And the years rolled slowly past. In the summer of 74, Corporal David Berkowitz came marching home. But to him, the Bronx was now almost as foreign and lonely as his tour of duty in Korea. And uh, when I came back, uh, most of my friends, my close friends, I didn't have too many, but I had a few close friends. They, they had all kind of gotten married or moved off. And my dad was retiring from his business. And my mom at this time was no longer living. So my dad was getting ready to move uh, down south to retire, and I didn't have anybody. Almost out of desperation, Berkowitz went searching for his natural mother, who had given him up for adoption at birth. When they finally met, Berkowitz learned he was illegitimate, and that he also had a half-sister his mother had chosen to keep. Psychiatrists later said this encounter so angered Berkowitz that it set off his urge to kill. It was mid-1975 when he attended what he thought was a harmless house party in the Bronx. He would make some new friends there. One of them was a 23-year-old man named Michael Carr. He had a father named Sam and a black dog named Harvey. And Michael Carr would soon lead Berkowitz down the road to ruin. He was talking almost like a scientist. Uh, he seemed to have a lot of knowledge of the occult and everything, and I had always been fascinated by that, but I never shared that with anybody. You know? Berkowitz and his newfound friends were soon holding moonlight meetings in the woods of the Bronx. He didn't know it then, but he was being drawn into a well-organized cult that had been operating for many years and had been linked to some serious crimes, including prostitution, drug dealing, and ritual killing. Like many other unsuspecting young people before him, Berkowitz was literally led into the woods, the woods of Untermeyer Park in suburban Yonkers, New York. We would have our uh, chants and so forth and our rituals, and uh, I did begin to witness some animal sacrifices, which at first 
that was like kind of, uh, you know, just weird. At the urging of his peers, Berkowitz bought occult books, including the Satanic Bible. Berkowitz studied his occult books while alone at night at his guard job on the docks of Manhattan. It was preparation for his formal initiation into the group. We were at a, a park, I guess it was Untermeyer, you know, it was long ago, and we had this circle formed, and we said, okay, let's start chanting now, let's call the names of the demons, let's call Satan's name, let's call Lucifer, let's bring him, let's summon him from the netherworld, from the air, and let's uh, now ask him to anoint you, to, uh, to knight you, as one of his loyal soldiers to do his bidding, to do his will. Did there come a time when this, uh, this group, when the crimes that they were committing, for, you know, went beyond animal sacrifice, yeah, whether yeah, arsons yeah. or something? Yeah, yes, they were definitely what a, was lot, that a about? lot of arsons. These demons wanted fire, and they're... The, this they, Lucifer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, this was Lucifer, and it was uh, Mole, Molech, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, another god uh, who wanted fire sacrifices. Those of us who had at this time dedicated our lives to Satan's service to be his soldiers and uh, we had to create an atmosphere that would be conducive to his coming upon the world scene. Berkowitz and his fellow disciples of hell would succeed beyond their wildest dreams. Our goal was to bring chaos to the city which tragically we did succeed in doing in bringing the city of New York to its knees and so forth which was part of the plan but how organized was that plan? David Berkowitz will tell us when our exclusive interview continues. Travel arranged through Continental. One airline can make a difference. Over 200 destinations throughout the world. That's the difference on Continental. Inside Edition will continue in a moment. Tonight, it's the shocking Son of Sam interview. Plus, she severed her husband's privates. Did this ex-Marine drive her to the edge? Tonight on Fox 5. Chilling new secrets from the lives of the perfect couple who shocked a nation. He's charged with murder. She's in jail for manslaughter. His best friend tells all. Also, swept away love, day two. A daring divorce experiment turned bitter on the next A Current Affair. A Current Affair, tomorrow at 7 on Fox 5. Ollie, I feel like a big dinner. You find a big dinner that we can afford, and I'll do both our jobs. Here's a dinner for two from Sizzler that's impossible to pass up. Two of our famous sirloin dinners complete with all the fixings for just $9.98. That's right, two complete sirloin dinners for just one incredible price, $9.98. That was a great meal, Ollie. Say, you missed a spot. o'clock news tonight on Fox 5. Coat World. Over 6,000 coats and jackets at famous Coat World savings every day. Coat World, we've got your coat. Liberty Village, Flemington, New Jersey, and at Woodbury Common, exit 16, New York Thruway. When he confessed to his murderous deeds, David Berkowitz said he acted alone and most investigators believed him. But journalist Maury Terry has long suspected there were others involved in the Son of Sam killings. Terry finally got his chance to ask Berkowitz about it as our exclusive interview continues. In the late spring of 1976, disco fever was setting the night on fire in New York City. Just a little further north, a group of young men and women were lighting a different kind of fire. Arson was just one of their crimes. They were also holding satanic rituals in the woods, sacrificing animals to their sacred demons, and dealing drugs and weapons. Now, this outlaw band of devil worshippers were about to use some of those weapons to take the next deadly step. I never knew, I never thought 
that the day would come when we would start to kill people. I, I, I never knew even that one day was going to come when I would break the law. But David Berkowitz was about to do just that. During a trip down south to visit his adoptive father, Berkowitz would make a swing through Houston, Texas. There, in June of 76, he had an old army buddy buy him a Charter Arms 44 caliber Bulldog revolver that he would take back with him to New York. 44 caliber Bulldog. The weapon would become the signature on an infamous chapter in American criminal history. Were there different guns involved? Uh, yeah, I think, I think they were, yeah. Yeah. Because other people had handled, I know, mine. And there was, there was a number of all different kinds of weapons. As far as the, those 44 Bulldogs, they were, I think, maybe two or three, if I can gather correctly, that were around. Because well, let's talk about that for a bit, just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, now, there were a series of eight attacks known yeah. as the Son of Sam Killings. Yeah. Did you do all of them? Uh, I was at all of them. I was at... Uh, more or less at all of them, scouting the areas and, and reporting back on likely targets and things. And uh, I did not pull the trigger at every single one of them. And uh, I believe the police do know that. I think that they were able to realize that after time, although it's not important, I mean, because I did do some of the crimes. I did take some lives, and I'm, I'm very sorry for that. And I look back and I said, my God, you know, how did this all come about? How did this all begin? And I, I just don't know anymore. I don't know. David Berkowitz had just confirmed the thrust of my entire investigation, that he had not been the lone son of Sam. I wanted more information, but I didn't know how far I could go with him. He'd soon lead me through the killings one by one and tell of his role in each of them. But there were some other questions I wanted to ask. At these crime scenes, David, um, were there always extra people, accomplices on the scene, assisting the, the shooter in one way or another? Yes. What roles would those people play? Uh, sometimes to be prepared to drive away, others to take, take a gun if need be, or just to scout the area and so forth. And uh, that was basically it, you know. And we, of course, everyone had played a role as far as the the chanting and the praying, everyone had had a role in that and, and understanding that, you know, this was going to be another uh, sacrifice to our gods, right. a bunch of scumbags that they were, <laughs> to our gods, Lucifer and his crew, and we said, yeah, this is going to be another one for you, you know, and that's uh, what the world knows as the Son of Sam shootings, where did that just happen, or did this, or were these, or, or did they just want more violence, and they were, go and they planned that they were going to do this? Uh? Well, there was certain, you know, there certain days that, within a time frame, that uh, the greater sacrifices had been called for. Uh, you know, a fire is okay on a on a night in, in uh, whatever, and, but sometimes there were ho different holidays and so forth. Oh, uh, you mean uh, satanic holidays? Yeah. Witchcraft right, holidays. Right, right, right. Hey, would they try to do some of these incidents approximate to those holidays? As close as would be possible because so many circumstances were beyond our control. Is that how they viewed these shootings or at least most of these shootings as like the ultimate sacrifice? Is that sort of the idea? Yeah. Yeah. The total waste made no sense. It made no sense. At the time, we couldn't see that. At the time, we didn't, you know. But what you, got, you got to a point, and you got to be in it to understand. You have to be in it to understand. And most people would never understand. They say that's too far-fetched to, to even be real. But it became horribly real. Now, tomorrow, when our interview with Berkowitz continues, he will reveal never-before-told details about his involvement in the murder spree that left six young people dead. And we will have a preview when Inside Edition returns in a moment. Big odors lurk in 
small places. Big odors linger in small places. Concentrated Air Rick Stick Up stop big odors in small places. Air Rick Stick Up. It's never fun to eat and run, rush and eat too fast. Cause you know it's gonna catch up with you at last. For acid indigestion or heartburn with headache, nothing's faster than Alka-Seltzer. Get yourself some Alka-Seltzer and you'll feel better fast. It was the strangest thing. I came in from the garden and heard these bubbling sounds from the kitchen. On the stove was this hearty simmering pot of stew. Chunks of beef, potatoes, carrots. And on the counter, a can of Dinty Moore beef stew. It hit me. The big guy had been there, Dinty Moore, cooking his stew in my kitchen. Wasn't crazy about the huge thumbprint on the counter, but the stew was real satisfying. Dinty Moore, the stuff that legends are made of. Kids will always find a way to come down with something. One day they're fine, and the next day they're sick. That's why you need health coverage from HIP. You get no surprises. Your kids are covered. So while they may never give you peace of mind... Mom! What you doing in school today? Oh, nothing. <laughs> you can get it from us. Between the wonder of how it begins and the mystery of where it ends. I'm looking for a miracle here. You believe in miracles? Lies the experience of all our lives. I'm gonna repeat this thing, yeah. From the makers of Ghost. <laughs> My Life. Rated PG-13. Sneak preview tonight. Tomorrow's Inside Edition interview with David Berkowitz, he denies being the trigger man in many of the Son of Sam killings. There were eight attacks. You, do, you just said you didn't do all of them. Yeah. Donna Laurie in the Bronx. Is that you? Yeah. Carl De Niro, Rosemary Keenan in Queens. And finally, the murder of Stacey Moskowitz, the blinding of Robert Violante in Brooklyn. Is that you? Our story continues tomorrow. And that is it for us today. Thanks for watching Inside Edition. I'm Bill O'Reilly. We'll see you next time. Two cheddars. The 40th to date awarded for that full cheddar taste that only comes from careful aging. But the biggest winner still is you. With Cracker Barrel Cheddar from Kraft. Judged to be the best. On the next Good Day New York, you're trying to lose weight. They just want everybody to look as fat and, you know, um, slobby as they do. So how do you cope with friends who try to get you off your diet? Plus 90210's latest edition, David Gale, and Larry straps on the rollerblades to play basketball. I'm Jim Ryan. Join us on Good Day New York tomorrow, starting at 6 on Fox 5. For the first time today, the Son of Sam killer, David Berkowitz, talks about his savage crimes, how he stalked and killed young women, and who he says helped him. A world exclusive on Inside Edition, straight ahead. We got the story. The next flight to Chicago. It was just a handful of us, but we had been committed to this now, and there was just no way to stop. Today, as the David Berkowitz interview continues, the mystery of the Son of Sam killings begins to unravel. The 44 caliber killer gives a chilling insight into the brutal Son of Sam murders. Secrets that he has never told until now. But there were eight attacks. You, do, you just said you didn't do all of them. Um, John Laurie in the Bronx. Is that you? Yeah. Uh, Carl De Niro, Rosemary Keenan in Queens. No. That wasn't you. We had the shootings of uh, Valentina Suriani and Alex Esau. Was that you? Shocking new allegations that he did not act alone. And are the cops covering up? Two, one.
Riley, thanks for watching Inside Edition today. Well, reaction has been furious to the words of David Berkowitz, the son of Sam Killer. After 16 years, Berkowitz broke his silence on Inside Edition yesterday, saying he had help in his brutal killing spree. Some believe him, some don't. But there is no denying that Berkowitz held New York City in terror for more than a year. And now for the first time, the son of Sam Killer tells investigative journalist Maury Terry about his horrendous crimes. She was a black hat beauty with big dark eyes. At 1.10 a.m. on July 29, 1976, two teenage girls, Donna Loria and Jody Valente, were double parked outside Donna's apartment building in the Pelham Bay section of the Bronx. They had just returned from a disco in nearby New Rochelle. Working on a night move. As they talked in Jody's car, a young man crept up and fired three shots through the passenger's window. Jody was wounded in the thigh, but Donna was killed instantly. Although no one knew it at the time, the son of Sam's shootings had begun. My daughter was 18 years old, and that's what he took out of my heart, 18 years. And I hope they get him. I really, really do. Police released this sketch of the gunman, and the case remained unsolved. Three months later, at 1.30 a.m. on Saturday, October 23rd, five shots rang out on a quiet street in Flushing, Queens. Carl De Niro, 20, was wounded in the head as he sat in a car with Rosemary Keenan, who was unharmed. Neither of them saw the shooter, and there were no other witnesses. The next attack occurred shortly after midnight on November 27th. Joanne Lamino, 18, and Donna DeMassey, 16, were talking on Joanne's front porch in Belrose, Queens, when a man walked up and fired five times. Donna was wounded in the neck, and Joanne was left paralyzed by a shot in the back. Police released two sketches of the gunman, one from a witness who saw him fleeing, the other from the two girls. Neither one remotely resembled the sketch issued after the murder of Donna Loria. The attacks continued through the dead of winter and into a new year. At 12.30 a.m. on January 30, 1977, in Forest Hills, Queens, 26-year-old Christine Freund was killed as she sat in her boyfriend's car. The boyfriend, John Deal, wasn't hit and didn't see the shooter. But for the first time, detectives saw something. Similarities among the attacks and the possibility that a serial killer was on the loose. Then, just five weeks later, only a half a block from the Freund shooting, 19-year-old Virginia Voskarichian was shot in the face on her way home from school. Police released this sketch of the shooter, described as a chubby teenager wearing a cap. But within days, they issued yet another sketch of a different person spotted near the scene and said that both individuals were wanted for questioning. Nonetheless, officials announced the birth of a lone 44 caliber killer. Yeah, well, they, what do they know? They don't know. They're, they, they too, you know, just didn't understand anything. But uh, they, I think for at, begin, at the beginning, maybe they began to see something developing, but they, for some reason, for whatever reasons, they just stuck with the, uh, the one person scenario and held that, they locked into that, and, which is understandable because I can, I, I can uh, understand that because, first of all, it's just something beyond the average person's comprehension that any type of cult could be operating that are hurting people in order to appease uh, evil spirits and so forth. That sounds so bizarre. It would soon sound even more bizarre when the police received an introduction to the Son of Sam. And when Inside Edition continues in just a few moments, David Berkowitz continues his confessions, and we will tell you how he finally got caught. Some things about my job I really like. Like going out to Sea Drift Inn to show Jan how AT&T can give her business the maximum advantage and work with her on new ways to help her business grow. As an AT&T customer, she's automatically enrolled in Maximum Advantage, and it gives her business AT&T quality at our lowest price guaranteed. 
Jan really likes the service I give her business and the things I contribute. I look at her calling patterns quarterly and make recommendations. I suggested she combine her long distance, 800 and international services into one convenient plan so she could save even more. Shouldn't you get AT&T maximum advantage for your business? Just call 1-800-936-2400 and switch to AT&T. And if you switch by November 30th, you can get up to two months of AT&T service free. Matter of fact, Jan thinks another advantage is the way I pitch in. Switch by November 30th for AT&T's quality, our lowest price and best service with maximum advantage, plus up to two months free. AT&T, the best in the business. When you choose a family car, you put all your eggs in one basket. So, when it came to safety engineering, from standard dual airbags to side impact protection, Mitsubishi did the same thing. Introducing the all-new 1994 Mitsubishi Galant with some of the most comprehensive safety engineering of any car in its class. Special leases on the all-new Galant S start at just $199 a month with only $1,000 down. The legend comes to life. The extraordinary Colonel's Rotisserie Gold. Now at an extraordinary price. Just $6.99 for a whole rotisserie chicken. Deeply marinated, slowly roasted, and oh so flavorful. Savor this legendary taste at an extraordinary price. Just $6.99 for a whole Colonel's Rotisserie Gold. Only at one place. Only KFC. We do chicken right. There are many strange things about the Son of Sam case, such as how one ordinary man, a postal worker, could commit such horrible crimes and not be caught for more than a year. How David Berkowitz was finally caught is fascinating, and some say very lucky, because the Son of Sam certainly would have continued his rampage. Here again, Maury Terry. Just six weeks after the murder of Virginia Voskarichian, there would be another 44 caliber attack. At 3 a.m. on Sunday, April 17th, in the Bronx, a young couple, Valentina Soriani and Alex Esau, were shot dead in a darkened lover's lane. This time, the killer left a calling card, a letter that would introduce Son of Sam to the world. The frightening letter warned of more murders and contained references to Satanism and to a vicious old man named Sam who thirsted for blood and issued orders to kill. Shortly afterwards, a follow-up letter was sent to the press. This one contained references to the Black Mass and four aliases of the killer, the Duke of Death, the Wicked King Wicker, the 22 Disciples of Hell, and one that would later emerge as especially significant, John Wheaties, rapist and suffocator of young girls. The Son of Sam's signature was followed by an occult symbol, one I'd later determined was inspired by a 19th century drawing by a black magician named Eliphas Levy. Sure enough, just four weeks after this prophetic letter was mailed, Son of Sam struck outside the Eliphas. Judy Placido and Sal Lupo were wounded as they sat in a car parked outside the disco at 3 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Ironically, at the time of the attack, they had been talking about the 44 caliber killings. By this time, the entire New York metropolitan area was talking about the case. And fear ruled the greatest city on earth. We, we do have a description of, of someone who saw him. Uh, I hope, I'm hopeful that will be helpful, but uh, if you're asking whether we have any indication of who he is or where he might be, uh, the answer is no. But there was one more attack to come before the hunt would end. It was 2.35 a.m. on July 31st, 1977. Son of Sam eluded the biggest dragnet in New York City history by slipping away from familiar killing fields to strike for the first time in the borough of Brooklyn. Stacy Moskowitz, a 20-year-old blonde, was out on a date with Robert Violante, also 20. They were sitting in their car when four shots rang out. Stacy was fatally wounded and Robert was partially blinded in the shooting. He destroyed a girl and he, he maimed a boy. He blinded him and there's no sense to it. He's just a sick maniac. He's an animal. And animals, like everything else, should be caged. 
and he should be tortured and not killed, not shot, but tortured. The Moskowitz Violante attack would become one of the most emotionally charged and controversial murders in America. And in terms of evidence, it would be the most significant of all the Son of Sam shootings. He's a male white, 25 to 35, approximately 5'7 to 5'10, a stocky build, and he had light, disheveled hair. Ironically, it would be this shooting that would lead to the arrest of David Berkowitz as the lone Son of Sam killer. It was at the Moskowitz murder scene that police got their first real break. Berkowitz received a parking ticket that soon would be traced back to him. Well, I guess it was uh, a summer of 1977 when I first realized that the devil was a liar. At that time, uh, about 10 o'clock in the evening, I think it was August 10th, uh, a number of police officers surrounded my car and pointed guns at me from every direction and said, uh, you know, freeze, you're under arrest. Even though he now says he had accomplices, after his arrest, Berkowitz told police he had acted alone. You know, I was told that, you know, if you, and you betray, if you betray this group, you know, we're all brothers and sisters now. If you betray this group, we're going to, you have to understand we're going to get your family. We're going to get them, you know, because Satan won't tolerate anyone trading, being a turncoat. There's no Judas Iscariots here. You know what happened to Judas, don't you? And coming next, we'll talk about what evidence there is that the son of Sam did not act alone. On Thursday, instead of walking a few blocks, some bureaucrats ride in expensive cars and your tax dollars pay for it. An Inside Edition investigation. Tonight, cop storm Michael Jackson's mother's home in sex scandal shocker. And the man who lost his privates takes a stand against his wife. Tonight on Fox 5. Swept away love. The most talked about social experiment of the 90s reaches its climax. An hour of bitter crisis turns into a wild night of passion. Swept away love, day three, on the next A Current Affair. A Current Affair, tomorrow at 7 on Fox 5. If your hands are red, rough, raw, dry, or cracked, use Neutrogena hand cream. It works. Dear Midas, after getting an outrageous estimate at my dealer, I came back to your shop. Your mechanics... John. June. Ron. Robert. Gave me a free estimate, stayed late to finish the job, and even pointed out that my brake pads were under warranty, saving me a lot. I was so thankful for not being taken advantage of. I bought them all lunch the next day. Thank you, Sarah Ocko. for healthy teeth and protein to help build muscle. When you drink milk, it shows. It likes milk and it shows. It does a body good. It likes milk and it shows. It does a body PC Richer, the appliance electronics and home office giant, saves you money. New Jersey, just wait. Don't pay more. Wayne Superstore opens November. Some authorities say David Berkowitz is not telling the truth, that he is the lone killer, that he committed the terrible crimes all by himself. As we have heard, Berkowitz has recanted his original confession that he did indeed kill those people alone. But what is the truth? Maury Terry continues his report. Earlier in our interview, David Berkowitz had made a sensational statement. There were a series of eight attacks known yeah. as the Son of Sam Killings. Yeah. Did you do all of them? Uh, I was at all of them. I was at, uh, more or less at all of them, scouting the areas and, and reporting back on likely targets and things. And uh, I did not pull the trigger at every single one of them. And uh, I believe the police do know that. I think that they were able to realize that after time, although it's not important, I mean, because I did do some of the crimes. You may not think 
that it's all that relevant as to what you did or what you didn't do. But I can guarantee you that to the public and the families and all, it's very important yeah. to survive as victims. Well, from what I could remember, so much of it, I, I really want to forget. I don't even dwell on it anymore. Uh, it's such a nightmare to me were, that to even... Uh, but there were eight attacks. You, do, you just said you didn't do all of them. Um, Donna Laurie in the Bronx, was that you? Yeah. Uh, Carl De Niro, Rosemary Keenan in Queens. No. That wasn't you. Joanne Lamino, Donna DeMassi in Queens. No. Christine Freund in Queens. No. Virginia Voscarici in Queens. No. no. You didn't do any of those in Queens. No, I was there. I was in that area. Okay, back to the Bronx. We had the shootings of uh, Valentina Suriani and Alex Esau. Was that you? And we go back out to Queens by the Elephus Disco out in Bayside. Judy Placido, Sal Lupo. Was that you? No. And finally, probably uh, the, one of the most infamous shootings in the history of the United States, the murder of Stacey Moskowitz, the blinding of Robert Violante in Brooklyn. Was that you? Even though he spoke softly, his silent nods, his almost shamed yes and no answers, had just opened the final unwritten chapter of the Son of Sam story. Is it true that John and Michael Carr were part of this group? Yes, yes they were. The evidence I had uncovered said that, uh, determined that John Carr shot Joanne Lamino and Donna DeMassi in Queens. If I believe correctly, yes. This is John Carr, and this again is the police sketch of the Lamino DeMassi gunman. The similarity is indisputable. Police would later claim that Berkowitz never knew John Carr or his younger brother Michael, but they were literally the sons of Sam. Their father was Sam Carr, the neighbor who owned the so-called demon dog that Berkowitz originally claimed ordered him to kill. And far from being strangers, Berkowitz now says that the Carr brothers were key players in the Son of Sam killings. Look at this Son of Sam letter sent to the press in the midst of the killings. It refers to a John Wheaties, rapist and suffocator of young girls. Wheaties was John Carr's nickname. And in this Son of Sam letter, there are intimate references to Sam Carr, his health and habits. Whoever wrote it had to know Sam Carr very well. Michael Carr. Did Michael Carr pull the trigger? Yeah, he did. I believe at one time, yes. Do you recall which one? I think it was at that disco in Queens. That disco in Queens was the Elephus, where Judy Placido and Sal Lupo were wounded while sitting outside in a parked car. A witness saw a young man with sandy-colored hair and a mustache flee the scene with his car's headlights out thus preventing anyone from seeing the license plate. That description more closely resembles Michael Carr than David Berkowitz. But neither Michael nor John Carr can ever be brought to justice. Both died violently and mysteriously shortly after the arrest of Berkowitz. Berkowitz refuses to name certain living accomplices for fear of reprisals against himself and his family. But in the killing of Christine Freund in Queens, he did offer some clues to the gunman's identity. We had the, the shooting of Christine Freund. Did they bring somebody in from out of town to do that? Yeah. yeah. Was that person from California or elsewhere? Mm, I think he was uh, from California. I think he was out in the Dakotas for a while, from what I understand. And these people are pretty guarded about their their past and their private lives and everything they're not we don't we don't uh some don't even use their uh real names i had gathered evidence showing that christine was not a random victim but rather was targeted for death after angering someone connected to the cult again eyewitness testimony contradicts the official version of what happened christine's boyfriend john deal 
who survived the attack, told me Berkowitz's account of that evening in his original confession was blatantly false. Deal said he had accidentally bumped into Berkowitz on the street just minutes before the shooting and that Berkowitz could not have been in position in time to fire the shots that killed Christine. Berkowitz also addressed one of the most critical mysteries of the Moskowitz murder in Brooklyn. The fact that both his own cream and black Ford Galaxy and a yellow Volkswagen were spotted at the scene. They had one of the biggest searches in the history of New York City looking for a particular yellow Volkswagen. Yeah, I know. The, uh, yeah. Was the gunman in that Volkswagen? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Do you happen to know if the person who owned that Volkswagen is still alive or dead, or do you know? Uh, I don't know. From what I was able to gather, most of the people that, after I was arrested, had begun to die one by one. And uh, the whereabouts of a number of them, I don't know. But there was a lot more Berkowitz did know. And on another day, we would have a lot more to talk about. And that day will be tomorrow. Joining us now is Maury Terry. Maury, one former New York City cop uh, says Berkowitz is lying flat out. How do you respond to that? I think it's uh, in his own self-interest to say that. Uh, the police department held the largest promotion ceremony in its history a week after David Berkowitz was arrested. And the cops in this case have started defending themselves before Berkowitz even came on Inside Edition. They have something to hide, something to protect. People built careers on this case, and they are not happy that Berkowitz is finally talking. They say Berkowitz should have said something before all this, that this is just something he's making up now. Berkowitz isn't making it up now. There was a letter that Berkowitz had left in his apartment, a letter that was withheld by the police department in which Berkowitz wrote a warning to the police agencies in the tri-state area saying there was a cult that had, as, had, pardon me, there was a cult that had as its goal the murders of 100 young men and women. That letter was in Berkowitz's apartment. It was with, found by the police and withheld by the police. And you got it? I got it. Okay. The Carr brothers, we're going to hear more about them tomorrow. They died mysteriously, but that is just shocking information. Yes, both Carr brothers died shortly after David Berkowitz was arrested, and uh, a number of other people connected to this group, possible suspects, also died violently. There are a lot of people connected to this case who have met violent ends since the arrest of David Berkowitz. We'll look forward to your report tomorrow, Maury. Thank, Thank you, you very man. much. And Inside Edition will be right back. A 40-year-old woman who loves a kid cereal just doesn't add up. Brave adults challenge the notion that Kellogg's Frosted Flakes are just for kids. I face five alarmers. And I can't face my five-year-old at breakfast. Proving again that even the most courageous can't resist that sweet crunch in cold milk. I love them. But I can't tell you why. <laughs> the secret's out. Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great! <laughs> Between the wonder of how it begins and the mystery of where it ends. I'm looking for a miracle here. You believe in miracles? Lies the experience of all our lives. I'm gonna repeat this thing, yeah. From the makers of Ghost. <laughs> My Life. Rated PG-13. At theaters Friday. Tonight, Rock and Joey go into therapy. What are we gonna talk about? Anything you want? Hey, you see the Redskins game the other night? An all-new rock. Then a gunman threatens Bakersfield's finest. I have really bad luck with jobs. Where did you work before the cable company? Post office. Oh, boy. An all-new Bakersfield PD. And some of the most dangerous fugitives in America aren't even old enough to drive. Watch Kids and Guns, the shocking true story on a special America's Most Wanted. Tonight, beginning at 8 on Fox 5. People around Flat Rock, Michigan feel more secure driving the Mazda 626. They make them themselves, so they put dual airbags in every one of theirs. And every one of yours, too. In Flat Rock, Michigan, they build the Mazda 626 so that even with its V6 engine, it still costs less than a four-cylinder Camry LE. Around Flat Rock, they think that's a powerful argument for the 626. And so do we.
tomorrow's Inside Edition, the mother of Son of Sam victim Stacy Moskowitz speaks to David Berkowitz, saying she believes Berkowitz did not kill her daughter and wants to know who did. I just want her killer. That's all I've ever, ever wanted. If I thought you were the one, then I wanted you. And since I understand that you are not the killer, there's nothing in my power I wouldn't do to have you say his name. So the question is, will Berkowitz shed some light on the mystery surrounding the Moskowitz case? And we will find out tomorrow. And that is it for us today. We thank you again for watching Inside Edition. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Hope to see you again next time. For the American Express card, the number is 1-800-THE-CARD. Tonight at 9, 8 central, home improvement won't be on. So why not check out the sexiest show on television? I've been dying to make love to you all afternoon. I like the sound of that. Get hooked on Melrose Place. Tonight at 9 on Fox 5. On the next Good Day New York. They want to be big, they want to feel big and strong. We'll find out when more and more young people are pumping up with steroids. Plus, Ivana Trump, single and succeeding. I also always had a great confidence in myself. And, and I knew that I would... Good Day New York. They want to be big, they want to feel big and strong. We'll find out when more and more young people are pumping up with steroids. Plus, Ivana Trump, single and succeeding. I also always had a great confidence in myself. And, and I knew that I would be able to support myself. Tomorrow on Good Day New York, right here on Fox 5. Today, the stunning conclusion of our exclusive reports on the Son of Sam killings. The evidence mounts that David Berkowitz did not act alone. And now, the mother of one of his victims speaks directly to Berkowitz. Inside Edition, straight ahead. We got the story. The next flight to Chicago. Today, more startling secrets revealed by David Berkowitz. The killer who terrorized New York City continues his exclusive interview. Were any of the 44 shootings done by females? Uh, yes. Would that have been one shooting or two? Uh, one I know of, possibly two. And he also talks about how he has been the victim of a savage attack. Another inmate tried to take my life by, uh, cutting my throat with a, a prison-made razor weapon. He's just a sick maniac. He's an animal. And animals, like everything else, should be caged. Today, a victim's mother pleads with Berkowitz to tell her who murdered her daughter. I just want her killer. That's all I've ever, ever wanted. Two, one. Bill O'Reilly, thanks for watching Inside Edition today. As the killer, David Berkowitz, sits behind bars, his words are causing many to look at the Son of Sam killings in a different light. Over the past two days, Berkowitz has told Inside Edition that he did not act alone, that others were involved in the murders of six young people. And many believe him, including the mother of one of the victims. In our first report today, that mother confronts Berkowitz, and Maury Terry examines the terrible crime that haunts this woman. The killing of Stacy Moskowitz highlighted the emotion and tragedy of the Son of Sam case, fueled largely by the anger and pain of a grieving mother. And let them see those children's faces, and those blank eyes that don't stare, and those faces that can't smile anymore. Let him see that for the rest of his life, and I hope he lives a long time with this in his heart. The full force of Nisa Moskowitz's fury was vented directly at Berkowitz after his arrest. An arrest charging him with the killing of Stacy Moskowitz. 
Berkowitz now says that although he was present at all of the murders, he wasn't always the hitman. You mean before the shooting occurred? Right. You would have been out of the neighborhood before the yeah, shooting some occurred? Yeah, sure. I see. So there were some instances you didn't even see them right, happen. Right, right. He says a case in point was the murder of Stacy Moskowitz and the blinding of Robert Violante in the last Son of Sam attack in Brooklyn. There is strong evidence to support his claim that he was not the gunman in this shooting. First, a young man named Tommy Zeno was parked directly in front of the victims and watched the attack in his rearview mirror. He described the gunman as having messy blonde hair and a light gray shirt that was out of his trousers. Uh, he was in, he looked like he was in good shape, because after he fired the shots, he took right off it, back into the park fast. Do you believe it was David Berkowitz who pulled the trigger that night? I didn't believe it was him then, and I don't believe it's him now. Why? Because of his shape when he took off and ran, and then a week later, we seen David Berkowitz, and what he looked like, I don't think he was physically capable of doing that. This is the sketch police drew from Zeno's description, but it was never released to the public, even though cops described Zeno as their best witness in all the Son of Sam shootings. And also, there's the issue of the parking ticket, which Berkowitz received at the scene. According to the statement of Cecilia Davis, a resident in the neighborhood, Berkowitz could not have killed Moskowitz because of that citation. No, he couldn't because I seen him taking off the ticket. He was still watching the police officers giving the rest of the cars tickets, and he followed the police officer. He could never go back to the black gun because I seen him. Berkowitz now admits that Mrs. Davis was right. Best as I recall, I uh, uh, drove away. Um, there was a police car there, and I drove behind them and uh, followed them for a while to see where they were going, and then they, they turned off somewhere, and uh, I continued going. Your confession wasn't true. Did you, in fact, try to stop that shooting from occurring? Sure. Could you tell me about that? Was this when you saw your car was ticketed? Right, right, yeah. I just wanted to get out of there. I felt uncomfortable about the whole thing, and I, I felt that this was pointless. I was just sick of everything. And, uh... But the parking ticket led cops to David Berkowitz. And ironically, although he later returned to the neighborhood, he says the real killer was in a yellow VW that was spotted speeding from the scene and was even chased through the streets of Brooklyn by a witness. But I had to hate somebody. And the only one I knew, the only name I got was Berkowitz. So I had to hate David. I mean, I had to hate somebody. Over the years, both Nisa and Jerry Moskowitz have studied the evidence and come to believe that although Berkowitz was involved, he did not hold the gun that killed their daughter. In my opinion, the New York Police Department covered it up. The city covered it up. I don't know what the New York City Police did. I still don't know what they did. I feel the city did wrong. They never followed up the case. And I heard quotes from judges that this case would break wide open in New York. And when it does, there's going to be a lot of heads rolling. I, I... Now that David Berkowitz has finally spoken out, that day may be drawing closer. The Moskowitzes know that he holds the answers. And before my visit with them was over, Nisa Moskowitz watched what he had to say and made a personal plea to him. I would deliver that videotaped message to Berkowitz. I hated you because you were the only name I knew of. And I had to put my hate somewhere. You're not the same person I saw 16 years ago. You talk differently, you act differently, and your mannerisms are... Well, you're not the same person. I just want her killer. That's all I've ever, ever wanted. If I thought you were the one, then I wanted you. And since I understand that you are not the killer, there's something in my power I wouldn't do to have you say his name. Do you have anything that you'd like to say to Mrs. Moskowitz, David? I just want to say that I'm very sorry that all this happened, and my heart truly goes out to her as well as all the other people, none of whom I, I knew. And I was just a fool 
to uh, listen to the devil. And uh, I wish I had uh, sense enough to walk away from uh, what I should have walked away from a long time ago. And I just pray for those that were hurt by the Son of Sam shooting, that, that uh, God continues to heal their, their lives and it, the survivors, that God continues to reach out and help those people. I pray for them. And in Christ's name, I pray for them. Berkowitz was obviously moved by the message of Nisa Moskowitz, but he insisted he was unable to give up the name of Stacy's killer at this time, again citing fears for his own family safety. Nevertheless, I believe that this case can finally be solved. Berkowitz has provided enough solid information to confirm what has been probed for years. That is, that he was not the lone son of Sam Killer. He has given up the names of accomplices who are no longer living and has provided strong leads to the identities of those who are still out there. It is both heartbreaking and frustrating for Mrs. Moskowitz not to know more. And in our next segment, we will push Berkowitz to reveal more about his alleged cohorts. Nobody else plays stuff like this. By far the most controversial part of our interview with David Berkowitz is his assertion that he did not act alone, that members of a satanic cult helped him. Never before has Berkowitz said that, and many are skeptical. But investigative journalist Maury Terry is one of those who believes Berkowitz and for 10 years has pressed him for details. It was a dreary fall morning when I returned to upstate New York for another on-camera session with David Berkowitz. Over the years, I investigated numerous possible accomplices of David Berkowitz. Among them were several women and a handful of former police officers. The Queens District Attorney also suspected women and a cop may have been involved. Finally, I had the opportunity to ask David Berkowitz directly. Was there a present or former Yonkers police officer involved in this group in any way? Yes, there was. Would that have been one former officer or more than one, or do you know? Uh, I think just one that I know of. I know you don't like talking about the so-called Son of Sam letters, but I have one question. Would I be correct in saying that those letters were a group effort rather than the work of one individual? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, that was a group thing. Again, part of the role or the goal was to uh, create an atmosphere of terror, you know, as a, as a to Satanism. We felt that that, you know, it was part of the thing to create that atmosphere of uh, terror or fear or whatever. Were any of the 44 shootings done by females? Uh, yes. Would that have been one shooting or two? Uh, one I know of, possibly two. Would that have been the Virginia Voskarichian shooting and or the Carl De Niro shooting? Uh, I know that uh, the Carl's uh, was a definitely a, a woman. And uh, the other one I'm not quite sure about. Berkowitz was being evasive about the killing of Virginia Voskarichian, who was shot on a Queen Street while walking home from school. I persisted, asking about a suspect spotted at the scene. That would have been the person with the ski cap, watch cap on, sweater? Yeah. Would that have been a woman? Yeah. Now, would that woman have been from New York or elsewhere? Uh, I believe uh, from, from elsewhere. I'm not exactly sure. You mean you didn't know the woman that well? No. Nah. Meaning let's not talk about it? Yeah. It was time to change the subject. But Berkowitz had exposed one of the glaring contradictions in the Voskarichian murder. Two suspects were observed at that scene. This one was clearly Berkowitz. Yet in his confession to being the lone son of Sam, he claimed to be this person in the ski cap, the shooter. It simply didn't make sense. Could you describe what role you played? Well, I just, uh, like some of the others, just to, just to walk around and uh, be a lookout and everything. And, uh, 
Berkowitz told Maury Terry off camera that he is still afraid and he has a scar on his neck that proves he can be hurt in prison. He will tell us what happened and why he is finally talking, coming next. Travel arranged through Continental. One airline can make a difference. One pass lets you earn free travel faster than any other airline. That's the difference on Continental. On Friday, these women were sold as infants. Now, Inside Edition joins their search for a pass that was taken away. Tonight at 9, 8 central. Home improvement won't be on. So why not check out the sexiest show on television? I've been dying to make love to you. Oh. Yeah. Get hooked on Melrose Place. Tonight at 9 on Fox 5. Tonight, take a daring look into college dorms and see how students are sexing it up. Watch Sex Out on Campus tonight on Fox 5. This Thursday, for one day only, you can save 15% off every item in every James Way store. You even save an additional 15% off things that are already on sale. Save 15% off men's and ladies' fashion. 15% off toys, housewares, health and beauty aids, home furnishings. 15% off every item in every James Way store. Even sale items. This Thursday, Veterans Day, for one day only at James Way. Hyperkeratosis, symptom, persistent, itchy, flaky scalp. Solution, Neutrogena T-Gel. It works. There's a price to pay. When you sell your soul to the devil, they, people fail to realize that the devil is going to come one day and say, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, but I'd like your soul right now. So why is the Son of Sam killer finally talking after 16 years? What does he have to gain from this? In our third report today, Berkowitz tells Maury Terry about his change of heart. After his arrest, and while New Yorkers called for his blood, Berkowitz told an incredible story to authorities. The confession about the, uh, the dog spoke and all of that, yeah. was that part of the cover story? Yes, yes it was. But, you know, the, sadly, the, the psychiatrists or the psychologists, they, they're so blind. You know, I tried to explain to them what was happening, but they couldn't gra grasp it, who Sam really was. And I hate to talk about this because people have made a joke about this for so very long. You know, the talking dog and well, everything. Let's... And Sam, but basically, I had given them the whole sh thing in a nutshell, and they never quite caught on that the highest ranking demon of the druids is Sam Hain. S-A-M-H-A-I-N. That's how you right. Sam Hain. And these people who died, uh, the victims, uh, sadly, were for him. So this worked two ways. You had Sam Hain, um, and you also had Sam Carr and his sons. Yeah, right, right, right. So would I be correct that the term son of Sam or actually Sons of Sam, worked on a couple of levels. Is that true? Yes, that's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did you take the rap for all of these people? At this time, I had really sold myself out to our little group, and I, I was like a gung-ho soldier for them, and so I just was sticking loyal, you know, said, well, you know, I'm going to hang, stand my ground, and, and for many years, for many years, I just kind of laid the path to myself. I had done that. Purposely, I also felt very guilty too. I felt like, well, what the hell, you know? I uh, I did shed innocent blood. I hurt people that didn't deserve to be hurt. And so, what the hell if I take the rap for two or or ten? David Berkowitz was just entering the second year of his life sentence when a would-be executioner came calling. Another inmate tried to take my life by uh, cutting my throat with a a prison-made razor weapon. It took 56 stitches to close the wound, and Berkowitz wears a deep scar as a reminder of the vicious slashing. I was lucky to be alive. Is that the scar? Yeah, that's the scar, yeah. When I went down to the infirmary, uh, the doctor there who stitched me up said it was a miracle that I lived. He still doesn't like to talk about the attack, and he has never said who did it. Berkowitz says he fought the influence of Satanism until the late 80s, when he found God. I don't think that if I 
would, uh, if I would have still been out there, I probably would have died, just like the Carr brothers, just like others. If uh, I didn't become a Christian, I, I may have uh, died a long time ago. I truly believe that. Berkowitz had flirted with Christianity several times in his life, but he says his true conversion came in 1988, when a fellow inmate gave him a pocket Bible to read. The words began to seem very, very real, you know, in other words, as if God, God were talking to me, you know. It says, uh, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. And, and you I, saw yourself. Yeah, and I saw myself, you know, and... Uh, and, uh, and he said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. And I was saying, you know, boy, you know, I made such a mess of my life. And uh, does the Lord even hear me, will he even pay attention to a sinner like me? And, uh, but one day, and I even forgot where it was, I was reading a passage of Scripture, and the words just touched my heart so much that I, I started to just kind of break down and, and cry. I started reading my Bible and Jesus set me free. Don Dickerman is a minister from Hearst, Texas, who travels to prisons around the United States. He has seen the best and worst of Berkowitz. When he was arrested and eventually went to prison, I wrote him a letter and basically said, uh, David, God still loves you and uh, Jesus can save you. Well, he wrote me right back and said, uh, when I get out of here, I'm going to kill you. I didn't write him a lot after that, but for whatever reason, God kept him on my heart over the years. And uh, I was preaching in his prison, the Sullivan prison, a few years ago when I met David personally. And at that time, he had already accepted Christ, and there was an immediate bonding. And uh, we, we're very close today. Love you. I love you, too. Love Amen. you, too. Don, during the course of your ministry, you have met hundreds of inmates who have said that they have been saved by Christ and come to Christianity. How would you gauge David Berkowitz's sincerity? David's sincere. He's genuine. Uh, his reasons for being involved in this are, are all pure and they're proper. And I'm, uh, I'm proud of David's life today. Uh, as, as anyone, I'm sorry for all the victims that were involved. But I'm proud of what I've seen happen to David Berkowitz. The Lord has brought, brought us a long way. Yes, he has. <laughs> Dickerman says Berkowitz practices what he preaches, teaching a Bible class and by volunteering to work with emotionally troubled inmates. They need some help. They need guys to, someone to talk to, someone to help them make their bed and, and get them dressed and so forth, someone to uh, be a, a friend and uh, listen to them when they have their problems. Berkowitz now spends his time in jail writing letters. I write to those people. We, my friend and I, uh, my friend who lives down south, uh, her name is Alice, we uh, get Bibles together to send them overseas, uh, Christian literature, and we really have some good relationships with those people. Berkowitz right says that his faith to has to made his life there. behind bars more bearable. When I first started out in my prison sentence, I'm, doing so many consecutive life sentences, totaling more than 300 years, there's no legal possibility of any type of, of uh, parole or anything. So I know that I'm in prison for the rest of my natural life. And uh, only through my faith in Christ has it kept me from, from like losing my mind or just giving up in despair. Berkowitz says that his faith also helps him deal with the guilt of his crimes. Do you feel the pain? day by day for the victims and the innocent who die? Yeah, 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 sure. I, I, can, I can't imagine the, the hardship that they go through, the ones that are left behind, even some of the ones that were wounded. Some got hurt pretty bad, and I just, there's nothing I can do. I, I pray for them. I pray for them. Well, as we have said, the Son of Sam murder case remains open. Police say they will examine any and all new evidence. Our investigation will also continue, and we will keep you posted in the weeks to come. And Inside Edition will be right back. And here's what's upcoming on Inside Edition. They think nothing of doing this with tax dollars. Would you pay 156 bucks to ride two blocks in a car? Guess what? You already did. Inside Edition exposes bureaucrats taking you for a ride. I was real late for the meeting. You're late for a meeting? 
Could I ask who you are, sir? Inside Edition, Steve Wilson confronts public servants treated like fat cats. You know what it costs to have that driver sit around and wait for you? Buckle up for a trip down Squander Street. That report and a lot more tomorrow. And that is it for us today. We hope you have enjoyed Inside Edition. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching us. We'll see you next time.
Look at the money, look at the money, look, I get 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 the money, it ain't really fun, I get the money, 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 it ain't really fun, I get the money. When I really fall again, I get the money. I really put it to, I get the money. 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 Look, I get the money. You think it's funny? I really don't. Look every day. Everybody doesn't understand you. Look at that. Look at all this. Look at all this money. 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 You think this is funny. 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 Yeah, you think this is funny. You think this is game. This ain't really much to not entertain you. I get the money and I throw it in your face. I get all the money. I get it all. You think this is a game. It is not even a game. This is not a game to be playing with. To be playing with. To be playing with.